Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to day three of our Venice travel diary. We are currently on the Rialto Bridge, going over the Grand Canal. So we've got a couple of things that we're going to be doing today. Um, the hard rock shop just behind us. Uh, yeah, a couple of things we're going to be doing today. We're on our way to pretty much next to the escape room that we did a couple of days ago. We found a place that will allow you to design and paint your own face masks. Not the normal face masks that have become the new norm, but the Venetian face masks, the Plague Doctor masks, the cats, the uh, opera masks, that kind of thing. Here's your view over the Grand Canal. Beautiful views over here. Um, not so beautiful with the the main boat dock, the the kind of official boat dock. You don't. The gondolas look good, but that part not as nice. So yeah, we're um, we're gonna go and paint some Venetian face masks today. A couple more things planned for later in the day. So hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when we're posting new videos. So. Uh, after about a 15 minute walk from our hotel in San Marco, we're now up here, actually back where we were a few days ago. We've got this mask shop behind us, which I showed you guys with the Plague Doctor on the outside. Um, got ourselves a, a drink, they don't have a Starbucks here, so we got a little uh, glass bottle Starbucks Frappuccino. Very English of us. Um, may as well be American though. We're going to head actually just down this street here and we're going to be next to the escape room that we were at a few days back and we're going to go and do the mask painting so just give you guys a little bit of an idea of what i mean when i say the mask painting these kinds of things so we'll get given one of these it'll be sort of a paper mache mask and then we can design it paint it make it all frilly and fancy however we like. These are obviously Day of Dead style ones, but these are more of the traditional Venetian ones. They got down here like a lion, a unicorn head, things like that, the panda, hippo, you name it, they've got it. So this is like the sister company of where we're actually gonna go and paint. So we booked it in there the other day and it was 40 euros per person to do it. It's only an hour experience, so we might be a little bit short on time, but we haven't got to wait for things to dry like we would at a pottery painting thing. Uh, traditionally at the pottery painting thing, they advise you three layers of paint. So, join us as uh, we go and get arts and craftsy. So we've made it inside now. Got our aprons on. We've got our face mask on because we were inside. Uh, this will be fun for an hour. This is a selection of all the things that you can get. So you've got the little sun and moon masks. Plague Doctor things. All the skulls. And then just down here, you've got all of the animals that I was saying about just a second ago. So it's already very hot in here. Got ourselves a cold drink. We've got a fan on, so I might have to sit there letting the breeze get me. And uh, we begin painting the, I can't see any designs that they've got. Any like musical notes and stuff like that. But. So we just finished the painting. We're still inside at the moment, we've finished all of our colours and we went for these colours and these colours. This is Becky's penultimate, slightly prematurely finished. Okay. And this is mine. Perfect. That was really cool. We finished 
the mask painting. It's a little bit of a strange experience. Normally in the pottery painting, they kind of leave you to your own devices and they just let you get on with it. Uh, the lady was there the entire time. So she was actually sort of assisting in the painting, touching it up for us. And then what she'd do to make it a little bit of a quicker process, she'd use a hairdryer to dry it off, which is something we're not used to. But actually, when you think about it, that's great because you can just get on with what you need to get on with pretty quickly. So normally what they do is you can have it glazed with essentially what is PVA glue going over the top of it so you have that nice shiny finish and then you come and collect it the next morning. We're flying out tomorrow so what we've asked is if she can glaze it, give it a few hours to dry and then we'll, we'll essentially carry it back super carefully to the hotel so we can put it in our suitcase tomorrow morning once it is fully dry but that was a fantastic experience it was uh, 40 euros person but it's a really hands-on experience and she was very attentive so you know I feel like I've paid for her ex her time as well and her expertise some pretty interesting facts these masks are used in carnivals and things like that over here in Venice um, what's essentially what we'd equate to be a Mardi Gras really the party prior to Lent and the festivals prior to Lent so people would custom order these masks and she'd she'd make them they'd send them designs they'd send them they'd send her the kind of dress that they're gonna wear the costume that they're gonna wear and she'd design a mask to match that or they can tell her exactly what they want so really happy with that kind of wish I'd been able to do this uh, disco mask that would have been pretty cool or the, or the space one over there but they're everywhere these masks are literally everywhere they're a proper Venetian souvenir to take home as well so we've got we've not just picked one up from a shop we've we've made our own and we've made it our own so I'm very happy with that what we're gonna do now we're gonna head to the opera house um, so we've got Google Maps going we've actually got Apple Maps which has been more successful than Google Maps over here for walking directions so use Apple Maps if you can if you've got an iPhone if not you gotta make do with Google Maps and I never thought I'd say that so we're gonna go to the Opera House we're gonna do a little tour inside and hopefully see some of where see where some great performances have happened but Go and do that mask painting if you're around here. I'll put a link in, I'll put all the details in the description of the place and the address so you'll know where to go. But it's definitely something we recommend. So we're out here now in front of the Opera House. Grand Theatre La Venice. So we're going to go inside and do a tour. See if we can see like the seating area, the boxes, the stage, that kind of thing. They're not doing a lot of performances at the moment because of the coronavirus. But let's see what we can see though. There's some real intricate details in here. Try and let you know some of the facts as well as we go around. So we're now inside the theatre. We've purchased our tickets and it's 11 euros for an adult and 7 euros for a child. We do a tour and the, you get an audio guide for free, which is just, it's a Huawei phone and they give you a set of sealed headphones as well. Um, so we're just listening to a little bit of the information at the moment. The theatre itself opened in 1792 and basically the symbol of the theatre is the phoenix. What we were just told is the theatre has been destroyed a number of times um, and each time it's been rebuilt and risen again like the phoenix the legend of the phoenix is that it rises from its own ashes so we're going to keep the audio guide on we're going to go on a little tour of the theater and um, pretty good procedures as we came in though they had again the digital temperature camera and they got shields up all the staff wearing face masks so it's pretty 
pretty good procedures, they've got signs up everywhere, one-way systems. Uh, when we checked out the audio guide, we had to give our, uh, both our names, as well as our driving license or passport for, it's essentially collateral. Yeah, you have to give those back to get your passport back. Understandable, you're not having to pay for the audio guide, so. So one of the interesting facts that we've just heard on our audio guide is that the theatre has been destroyed and rebuilt twice. First time in 1836, that was an accidental fire, the stove caught fire. This is the foyer that we're in now, and this is where you'd socialise. This part was actually spared from the fire, but you've got the massive chandeliers behind us which is pretty cool um so we said uh, 1836 stove malfunctions burns the place down foyer survives 1996 arson everything goes awry foyer survives still first time in 1836 it takes them one year to rebuild it 18 months or so second time in 1996 actually takes them seven years um, we've just got in here now pretty cool thing they've got a little uh, fan under each of where the seats will be but you see the boxes and how beautiful it is this is pretty incredible Look at the angels on the ceiling As I said, each of the areas where the seats will be have a fan underneath in order to keep you well ventilated. I guess that's the royal box up there, just uh, just behind us. And then these will be the boxes for all the people who have a little bit more money. It's all gilded, gold leaf. So, we're going to press on with our audio guide into the theatre proper. As you can see, we've got a little phone. Press see it's proper. We're in the ballroom. Can dance. So this is number 15 on the audio guide. Just add 16 because there's a one-way system in place. You're not following the audio guide in order. But again, beautiful gilding. Absolutely beautiful. So just up here now in the royal box, best seat in the house. Um, this has been put together and destroyed a number of times, for various reasons, changing of ownership, things like that. They've got these infinity mirrors to make it feel bigger. So, as we come out of there, we've got a model of the theatre itself. And it's actually um, quite considerably bigger, the size and the scope that you have. Obviously you've got the Venetian bridges. This will be a dock for what's essentially anyone really in Venice. Right, we've just come out of the the theatre. I was calling it an opera house initially, but they do more there than just the opera. That was really good. 11 euros for, we're in there for an hour and a half, which is not bad. We've uh, we got our audio guides, so we're able to go around and hear everything. 
when it was destroyed by arson back in 96, they didn't start rebuilding it until 2001. It took 600 odd days to build at a cost of 90 million euros. But it was a guy and his cousin that burnt it down and they, one of them got arrested. He turned himself in. And then the second one went on the run and was found in the Mexico-Belize border, sentenced to 16 months, whilst his cousin got a full six-year sentence. So the moral of that story is it seems like it's better to run away from your crime than it is to hand yourself in, because if you run away, you've got a lower sentence. Don't try to add at home, kids. Don't do that. Um, what we're going to do now, we're just going to go around the outside of the theatre. We're going to try and see the dock where the anyone can dock there. Anyone can dock their boats there. But I can imagine it's generally royalty and people like that that would dock themselves. So this is the main dock into the theatre. And it was part of the requirement when it was commissioned that you'd have two entrances. One at the back for boat docking and one at the front for arriving on foot. We've got a gondola just coming through beneath us. It's quite a picturesque little area, small, really new looking bridges just going up and down. It's very, very nice around here. We're just sort of coming away from the theatre at this point. So this is the dock from the other side, as you can see. It's all gated up at the moment because there's not really a lot of theatre performances going on because of the current situation. This is very much a picturesque gondola ride area. We're now back in St. Mark's Square, and this is essentially the central point of Venice, really. This is where you kind of get your wayfinding from. How close are we to St. Mark's Square? How far away are we? Where is St. Mark's Square? You know, and that's the kind of general vibe of it. So we've got the Basilica in front of us. We've got the Campanile Piazza in front of us as well. We're gonna go to the Palace, which is just to the right, basically on the seafront. Now we've already purchased our tickets for this and it's 25 euros per person, so roughly about 24, 23 pounds. If you convert into dollars, about 30 dollars a person. I'm gonna go in there. They'll use the camera to digitally check our temperatures again. On this one, they'll actually check your wrist as well at the same time. You've got to wear a mask at all times when you go inside, which completely fine with if it's a uh, if there's AC in there, but uh, if there isn't, then it does get a little bit toasty. You can go inside, I think there's a museum in there, hopefully see some cool things. Maybe we'll find an audio guide as well. That'll be a bonus. Like I said before, when we were out here the other day, it was 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30, and people were queuing for ages to get into the Basilica, to get up to the, up the tower. But now, I mean, there's a queue of probably about 15 people for the tower, but the Basilica doesn't have a queue at all. So you might actually be better just waiting until the evening or waiting until a late afternoon. You're not standing out in the sun all day then for hours and you get in pretty quickly. So if you can find something else to fill your morning, go and do this in the afternoon. But let's head inside the palace now. We're now in the courtyard area. As you can see, you got the dome just over my right shoulder. A couple of wells here as well. As well. Got a bit of information. We've not got any audio guide or anything like that. This entire part is outside, so don't know if you have to wear a face mask. I'm assuming that you do. We're just about to go up now anyway. So we'll be going inside and we'll have to put the mask on regardless. So 
as we come up the stairs, they're decorated with uh, gold leaf and motifs, and everything has a mythology reference. So Venus, Neptune, goddesses, gods and goddesses, that kind of thing. So the stairs are flanked by these two two statues. With all the gold motifs. So what you see in this room is the armory. We've got some of the many swords. We've got the coats of armor. Well, the armor that the soldiers would wear as well as models of horses and whatnot. Um, we've got a child armor over there. We've got another section of armory here, all of the swords that have been taken into battle. With the spears, bow and arrows, axes, all sorts. This is a family tree. Of Filippe Foscarini. And they're running out of space. This is the bridge of size. Yeah. Because they'd be frustrated when they're coming through. So they're given this small little glimpse into the outside world, the prisoners. That's your bed. Nice and comfortable. This is the giant's staircase. And this exits right into St. Mark's Square. And you've got the Campanile Tower just through the archway there. Hopefully you enjoyed that look at Dodge's Palace. A um, couple of pointers, it's not very disabled friendly and some of the signs are a lot more complicated than they need to be. They give you quite a lot of long-winded information, which sometimes that's good if that's what you're into. Fantastic, you've got all the information to hand, you can soak it in. But sometimes you just want the cliff notes and you just want that little 
little dribble of information that gives you just enough to to get by. So um, 25 euros. I don't know whether I can say it was worth the experience. It was pretty much a one-way system. Uh, everything that we saw, a lot of chamber rooms and things like that. It's where all the council sat, all of the parliament, things like that. So they would all do all the proceedings and prosecutions there. We also took a trip inside the prisons, the prison cells, and it was the first real purpose-built prison of the time. So it was pretty cool to see that. Again, I'm not 100% sure if it's worth the 25 euros, but if you're into history and if that's what you're into, by all means go and check it out. It's in St. Mark's Square, right by the seafront. Very easy to get to. Hour, hour and a half you'll be in there for. Two and a half if you read all of the information, you read all of the signs properly. But otherwise, you know. So we're gonna take a little bit of a rest for an hour or so. And we're gonna go and find somewhere to eat along the Grand Canal. We've collected our masks that we painted earlier on this afternoon. And I'll put a picture of those in now. They're not too bad. They're pretty good. They, they've come out very well. Becky's well and truly above and beyond what I managed to do. So, props to her. Uh, we're now at a place called River del Vin. River del Vin. And we are on the Grand Canal at the moment. Not the best of views actually there. But we're just up from the Rialto. Uh, a little thing that I, I just wanted to eat right by the Grand Canal, really. Uh, the menu's not too expensive. You've got things ranging from 10 up to 25 euros, depending on what you order, obviously. If you've, you know, your basic appetizers are 10 euros. And then if you're looking at like a steak or something like that, you're talking 25 euros. So we're gonna have a look through the menu, see what we wanna order. It's a very fishy menu. I'm not massive on fish, but we'll see. So we've just ordered our food. Becky's ordered the mushroom and cheese ravioli, which sounds really nice. I've ordered the beef fillet, which is a nice thick beef fillet. Comes with vegetables and I've ordered some french fries as well. Uh, mine was 25 euros and Becky's was 15 euros. Uh, we've ordered a can of coke. It's actually the same amount of a can of coke back in the UK, but just in a different shape. And I tried to order tap water and was told that they don't have tap water at all, which is strange. So I've got a bottle of water. Just got our food, uh, probably only waited 10 minutes or so. Uh, the presentation on it is pretty good. I mean, you can't really go wrong with steak and veg and a lemon. Becky's, on the other hand, is presented really, really well. It looks like maybe a small portion, but that's going to be filling. It's pasta, so it's ravioli filled with mushrooms uh, with cheese sauce and then obviously the herbs over the top. And then I've got the steak, got it done medium rare. And we've got a portion of fries that should be on their way out in a second. And he's going to bring out some parmesan for Becky's in a second. We'll give it a try and let you know how it is. And like I said, mine was 25 euros, Becky's was 15 euros. And we've got a portion of fries that were 5 euros as well. My steak was lovely. The vegetables that came with it were neither here nor there. Basically just frozen vegetables. So that could have been better. The fries were nice. Uh, Becky's food was lovely and a fantastic portion size. Uh, to the point where I was actually dipping my steak in the sauce that came with us. We've just ordered dessert though. So Becky's gone and ordered a strawberry panna cotta and I've ordered a portion of profiteroles. I think the profiteroles come out different to how we would normally do them in the UK. So they're actually like completely submerged in chocolate. And we've got Becky's panna cotta here, which is, if you move it, it's good consistency. So let's give these a try. 
I'm curious about these profiteroles because they are completely different to how we would do them in the UK. We just traditionally have the profiteroles with chocolate sauce over the top and filled with cream. So this will be interesting. So we just finished having our meal at the Riva del Nera and absolutely fantastic. I did ask for the steak to be cooked medium rare and came out closer to medium than rare. Uh, Becky's portion was fantastic. Total value was £71.60 but you are right by the Grand Canal. We're actually just walking over the Grand Canal at the Rialto Bridge so you're expected to pay a little bit more at that point. So we had a pretty good day. Went and did some mask painting this morning. We normally do like to do pottery painting so with Becky being how she is and finding in somewhere to <coughs> paint it was bound to happen really um, when I collected that went up to Dodgers Palace spent some good time at Dodgers Palace got some of the history and whatnot from there and had a really nice meal this evening so we had a fantastic time here in Venice and if you've enjoyed our video hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed our trip hit the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified when we post a new video see you on the other side thanks <laughs>